So in order to rearrange the equation to isolate C, the first thing we would want to notice is that B is being multiplied by the entire quantity that's in parentheses. And so what we could do is the inverse of multiplication and divide both sides by B to get this problem started. Now, of course, B divided by B is just 1, so those essentially cancel. And then we're left with A divided by B is equal to the quantity that was in the parentheses. Because that quantity in the parentheses is isolated, we can drop the parentheses to yield 1 over C minus 1 over D. We'll notice that we have the subtraction of the quantity 1 over D, so we can do the inverse of that operation, which of course is addition, and add 1 over D to both sides of this equation. So the minus 1 over D and the plus 1 over D are 0, so those will cancel leaving us with just 1 over C on the right side. These are not like terms, the two fractions here, A over B and 1 over D, so we can't really directly add them yet, so we'll write it as follows. We can come over here to do that. So we'll have A over B plus 1 over D is equal to 1 over C. So far, so good. We've almost isolated C. Right now we have 1 over C, though. There probably are a couple of ways to proceed from this point, but why don't we go ahead and find a common denominator so that we can actually add these two fractions together. So in order to establish a common denominator, we would have to multiply b by d on both the denominator and the numerator, and then multiply this denominator d by b, both denominator and numerator. So we would have the following result. We would have ad over bd plus b over BD. So we've established the common denominator. Once you establish the common denominator, you can actually merge the two fractions together. You can write them as a single fraction, in other words. So we could rewrite it as follows. So notice at this point we have a single fraction on both the left side and a single fraction on the right side as well. And it turns out that whenever you have a single fraction on either side of an equation, you can flip them around. So in other words, what we're going to do is invert this fraction and then we'll also invert this fraction. Now this is a trick that only works if you have a fraction on each side of the equation, just a single fraction, I should say, on each side of the equation. So for example, if you had something like 1 over b plus 1 over c equals 1 over d, or something like that, this inverting trick would not work because you have the addition of two separate fractions on the left side, as opposed to this case where we have just a single fraction. So let's go ahead and flip these fractions upside down, so to speak, and we would have the following result. Okay, so there we have it. We've flipped the fractions around, and actually we've pretty much accomplished our goal. We have on the right side here c over 1. Of course, any quantity divided by 1 is just itself. So in other words, c divided by 1 can actually be written as just c. So we can actually sort of cancel out this denominator here, and we've done it. We've isolated c, and it turns out that c is equivalent to this rather hideous fraction, bd all divided by ad plus b.